Hello everybody, my name is Alberto and I am a game developer and today I wanted to start a new series of videos in code design and I want to focus in some topics that are normally left behind in other tutorials where starters uh, need to get their hands on the engine and need to learn and I believe these are very important and you might spend years learning in the wrong way and then realizing that following certain patterns will allow you to create extendable and high performance games with also an easy workflow for all your coworkers. My idea is to build a small game with you. We are gonna write together the code and we are going to try to build up all these different patterns and see how they come together to create some kind of game, for example, a small platformer game. And then we will see how we interact with the Unity engine and our system and how we can make this in a way that is useful, it's easy to work and so on. In this slide over here, I'm trying to show you what is the first step that we need to do to begin with our game. So we all know that Unity has their own uh, callbacks in the so-called mono behaviors, which are methods like awake, update, fix update, and so on. And from here, we could start our game and have some kind of control by creating and, and getting references from the awake method and updating the logic in the update methods. This is one way, but this can be really costly when we start having a lot a lot and, and more mono behaviors the idea is to have an entry point where we are going to listen to these events these callbacks we are going to pass them to our design which we are going to call a game instance and this is going to be just a bunch of systems that they are going to be in charge of updating the game logic of our game we're going to start with our game entry point behavior, which is going to be a mono behavior. It's going to be persistent across scenes and unique. And it's going to have an instance of the game instance, which is our main application. This instance of the game is going to be created on a starting. Afterwards, we are going to update it using the different mono behavior callbacks, update, fix update, and late update. And this is the way we fit our application through an entry point with the Unity callbacks. Finally, we're gonna make sure that we are cleaning up by disposing our game instance. Looking at our game instance class, we see that this derives from a system group class. This base class is no more than a container for all the different systems that live in our game instance. These are stored in this dictionary by hash. We can add systems, we can remove systems, or we can access the systems. Finally, we make sure that when we dispose, we are going to destroy all different systems and clear the systems. Just for you to know, this hash container is just a helper class that I've implemented here in which we generate a unique hash per any system type that you are creating in the application. In this way, we have unique hashes and we have an easy way to access them. Finally, for this video, before moving towards the implementation of specific systems like the update system, just want to show you how this is going to look in the main structure in our game instance. We're going to have systems like the update systems or like this example system, and we're going to create them in the initialization method. We are going to add them to our systems group and enable them. The update system is going to be fed by the late update, fix update, and frame update through the game instance callbacks. In the next video, we're going to focus on the implementation of the update system. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.